Hi, I'm Kat Kosho with Dunlumber. I'm sitting here with Jeff Chase from VLUX. We're going to talk about some skylights today and some things to think about if you're considering putting skylights in your home. Jeff, thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Kat. It's great to be here. Just a little about myself. I've been working with VLUX in the Pacific Northwest since about 1988. I'm the sales representative for the greater Western Washington area. My main focus is, uh, is Puget Sound. And what I do is I call on customers, our dealers, our, our trade customers, architects, pretty much anybody, homeowners, anyone that uh, touches skylights, uh, I get involved with that. So let's start from the beginning. What are the benefits and most common reasons that people install skylights in their homes? The most obvious one is to bring natural light in, especially in a climate like ours in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, many of us are light starved, especially in, in Western Washington. The skylights are a great way to bring light into a room. It's interesting um, because of the way a skylight is oriented on your roof to the sky, you get about twice as much daylight through a skylight than you would a vertical window. So they're very efficient that way. You don't have to blow a hole in your energy budget to put in a skylight. In fact, you can uh, help reduce energy by using them. But also because of the way they're in your roof, the light comes straight down or it spreads out in a space and it doesn't have to go through walls or, uh, or furniture or things to get to the middle of the space. So it's a great way to light the core of a space basically. The other benefit, and this is a big one, uh, is natural ventilation. So in fact, the name VLUX comes, comes from two words. The VE in VLUX stands for ventilation. The LUX is Latin for light. So VLUX, our name means natural light and ventilation. So what does that mean, ventilation? Well, this is a huge part in our overall goal to provide a product which enhances and makes for a more healthier environment for people. You know, we spend about 90% of our time indoors. So what happens indoors, the air that we breathe, that's a big deal. Um, and when you open up a skylight in your roof and a window down below, you create a natural convection effect of moving the hot air, which normally tends to stay near the ceiling, out of the house and bring fresh air in at the same time. What this does is it makes the space more comfortable. At the same time, it releases a lot of the indoor gases, CO2, vol volatile organic chemicals, uh, excess humidity, all these things which kind of conspire to make an unhealthy indoor space are helped greatly with natural ventilation. So that, those are probably the big uh, benefits. And, but just to circle back on natural light, you know, we all feel better sitting in daylight. Um, there are a lot of physiological benefits to natural light, and a lot of these have been quantified. But really, it's a feeling that we get um, about being connected to nature uh, through, through a skylight. That is, you know, just that that feeling of uh, of being in the sun. I, I mean, it's funny we uh, people, you know, you're walking down the street. Which side of the street do you walk on? But most people prefer the sunny side, mm -hmm. so that's where they go. And again, in our in our climate, since we have so many dark months, it's particularly important uh, for people to bring natural light in. So with all those great benefits, if someone's looking to put a skylight in their home, what are the different types available and what are the, some of the key differences between them? That's a great question um, because there's several different types of skylights that a person could consider. First of all, when you look at the Pacific Northwest, this is primarily what we call a curb mount skylight market. And what, what happens with a curb mount skylight when your home is built, the contractor builds a box basically out of dimensional lumber, usually two by six lumber that gets put over the opening in the roof. That curb or box gets flashed and then the skylight finally comes along and just sits over the top of it. So that's primarily what we sell in this market. Curb mount skylights represent probably 85% uh, of our sales in the Northwest. Mm -hmm. The other type of skylights are deck mount skylights. And um, deck mount skylights are probably uh, the largest part of our overall business at VLUX. They're what mostly gets used in, uh, in all the rest of the country and the world. Uh, aside from the Pacific Northwest, we are uh, unique out here 
in that curb mount skylights are used in residential applications. But deck mount skylights have a lot of advantages. Uh, for one, they sit lower to the roof line, where a curb mount skylight might sit eight or 10 inches up above the roof. A deck mount skylight sits about four and a half, five inches above the roof. So they have a tendency to kind of melt into the roof and architecturally, um, they're, you know, they, they look better. Also because of the way a deck mount skylight is, uh, is so low to the roof, they're more energy efficient. There's less heat transfer through the frame than there is on a curb. And, uh, and that's one advantage to deck mount skylights. And then finally, deck mount skylights can be used in applications that we call uh, combi or combination. And this is where uh, people put skylights into adjacent bays on their roof. See, with a curb mount skylight uh, on a typical roof, you could put a skylight here and then jump a rafter bay and put another one, jump another rafter bay and do another one. But with deck mount skylights, you can put them side by side by side by side. So if you were gonna do say a, uh, a kitchen bump out or build a sunroom, that would be a great application for a deck mount skylight. And it's what our company was founded on. And, uh, but because this is primarily a curb mount skylight, um, they're, uh, they're less uh, popular than other parts of the country. And then we have tubular skylights, uh, which we call sun tunnels. So if you've ever walked a, a home show or a trade show, you'll see uh, people selling tubular skylights. And there's several different brands. Ours again is called Sun Tunnel. And what these do is they bring light through your attic, through a tube or a tunnel, down to a round diffuser in the ceiling. And they're great for smaller spaces. There's some places where a skylight just won't fit, like an interior bathroom or a closet or a laundry room. Those type of spaces are great for sun tunnels. Plus they're more economical. Uh, they're a lot less expensive to install than, than cutting in a brand new skylight. So there's that element of it too. Now within those, uh, within those types of overall skylights, you have fixed skylights, one that don't open. These are skylights that just bring light in. And then you have venting skylights. These are skylights that open up again to let fresh air in. And within the, uh, within the venting skylights, which we call fresh air skylights, uh, there's several different types of those. You have manual venting where you would use a control rod to operate them. You have electric sky, uh, venting skylights that get hardwired, and then you have solar powered skylights, which are completely wireless, uh, use a wireless remote and uh, get their power from the sun. A solar panel mounts to the outside of the skylight. The sun hits it, charges a internal battery. It's a nickel metal hydride battery. This isn't like your cell phone battery. This is a very robust battery, proven technology. We've been making them for decades. That's basically how a solar powered skylight works. So those are pretty much the three main types that are used in this market. Uh, and then, you know, we have a lot of different commercial skylights as well. So, but I think that pretty well covers that. One of the questions that we were debating when selecting skylights for our home was, we wanted the solar power, but we live in the Pacific Northwest. Is there enough solar energy for solar power skylights here? Great question. We get asked that a lot uh, because we live in a climate where we don't have sunshine all through the year. Uh, people often wonder is, you know, is there enough light? And so Velux launched our solar skylight in the US uh, in 2013. We've been manufacturing them since 2012. In the Pacific Northwest, and you know, I was around back then and I was a little concerned about it myself if these were going to work. So in my whole time, uh, the last uh, 11 years or so since we've uh, been making these things, I've had about two cases where there wasn't enough light. So it does not require direct sunlight hitting the solar panel to charge the battery in the skylight. Any kind of ambient outdoor light, even through a thick cloud cover, will charge that battery through the solar panel. The cases where it didn't quite work, we just relocated the solar panel, you know, above the skylight instead of below it. And, you know, that solved the problem. And we put enough wire in the kit to allow you to reach that in case that was an issue. I believe it. We put in six solar powered ones and we've had them for several years and I've not had any issues. But at the start, I was a little skeptical. <laughs> 
So you've touched on some of the technology in these skylights. Could you walk us through some more of that and the features that work its way into a smart home, smart skylight? So what I would consider a smart skylight is one that uh, makes it easier for the customer to operate it and to make it work and to experience the benefits that skylights provide. Probably where a lot of our focus has been over the last few years uh, is our solar skylights. As I mentioned, uh, these are completely wireless. They are efficient at gathering light. Um, and, you know, beyond that, uh, they are, you know, one of the key elements of making a more energy efficient home as well. And, um, you know, we, we also have technology built into our shades for skylights. You know, shades are a big part of what Velux does. We've been manufacturing shades uh, for skylights as long as I've been with the company. So customers of Velux have been experiencing this for a long time. But what we, we really didn't talk about too much is uh, the other benefits that you can get. But what a lot of folks don't know is that when you close a shade in the wintertime, you're making that skylight about a third more energy efficient. You're having less heat transfer uh, through the glass and it's keeping that heat indoors in the, uh, uh, in the wintertime. And in the summertime, when you close the shades on skylights, you're keeping the house cooler so that you, know, you might not have to turn on that air conditioner so quickly. So that kind of uh, speaks to the benefits of, of technology in terms of not just making the skylights more simple to operate, which is great. I mean, there's nothing like grabbing a, a remote and pressing the button and having the skylight open up automatically. To get back to some of these uh, technology areas, you know, as human beings, we're not really great at closing our shades every day during the winter time. More than likely, we're going to forget to do that. So one of the uh, things that we're seeing in technology with skylights, we're, we're kind of borrowing it from the commercial realm that has been doing it for a long time. They're using sensors to control the light. So in other words, if you were to walk into a big box store and they've got skylights up, well, they have sensors so that when the light level gets to a certain time, the lights automatically turn off because the skylights are providing the natural light. And in a commercial setting, that's saving a lot of money. I think the uh, electricity um, and electric lights are probably the largest part of the electrical usage in a commercial space. So that technology is slowly working its way into, uh, into residential applications in terms of being able to use those same type of sensors to operate the skylights. So for instance, uh, when you are able to you say a smartphone app, uh, which is available from Velux, and you set your skylights on your phone uh, so that the shades close at five o'clock in the evening and they open up at seven o'clock in the morning every day from October through April, that happens automatically. You don't have to think about it. And the savings are greater because of that, the energy savings. So, um, so that's driving a lot of it is uh, energy efficiency. And then the other part that's driving it is just, again, having a more healthy indoor air environment and a more comfortable environment. So for instance, um, with, uh, with some of our uh, remotes and our smartphone app, you can set your skylight to open up when it is, um, when it's say 80 degrees, the skylight will open up automatically. You can have them so that uh, uh, if the CO2 level gets too high in your house, the skylight will open when it, uh, when it say, gets to be about 1,200 parts per million. This is something that I've recently experienced myself. Um, I installed the Velux Active climate sensor on my own skylights last year when I had them replaced. I had some old skylights replaced at home when I had my roof redone last year. So, um, I really hadn't experienced the, uh, the effect of CO2 before. I mean, I had experienced it because these are in my office and it's a small space. And, uh, and sometimes I would get really sleepy in the afternoon. I never really thought about it until I looked, you know, I installed the Velux Active system and I monitored what my CO2 levels were. And what I found is in my little office, it's about 100 square feet. 
I have two, two skylights right above my desk and the, the Velux active climate sensor on the wall. Uh, it's sensing CO2 humidity and temperature. So, and I can check it. So I'm, I'm sitting at my desk at, you know, in the afternoon, three o'clock, trying to get my day wrapped and, uh, and finish my office work. And I'm starting to fall asleep and I'm going, what the heck is going on? And one day I just looked at my phone and I said, oh my God, the, the CO2 level in here is like 3,500 parts per million after being in my office t- for two hours. So just to give you, you know, a baseline, outdoor air is about 400 parts per million. I set, after I realized what was going on, I set the, uh, you know, I set my skylight to open up when it got to be about 1,500 parts per million, uh, vent the house or vent my, uh, my office space. And, uh, and it made a huge difference. You know, I'm not getting, getting sleepy in the afternoon or going for, you know, I'm not making pots of coffee, you know, in the middle of the day just to stay awake. So these, uh, you know, this has a real, uh, a real effect on us. And um, I never realized it until I experienced it myself. I'm pretty much tuned in now to, you know, my indoor air environment. I know when it's good, I know when it's bad. And if it's bad, I know what to do about it, so. That's awesome. So you mentioned there's skylights that have the control rod you can open and then there's remote. So the app on the app, you can open the skylights, you can control the shades. Right. Yeah. So this, uh, this app is part of a product that we sell called Velux Active. And that product has three components. Uh, primarily it's a climate sensor. It senses CO2, humidity, and temperature. And so whatever room you want to monitor, you take this, it's about the size of a deck of cards. You put it on the wall. And then uh, the other components to it are, you have a departure switch, which allows you to lock the skylights so that uh, no one can play with them at home while you're away. And then the, uh, the third part of it is an internet gateway device. This is a little box that plugs into the wall and it connects wirelessly to your home Wi-Fi router. And that allows you to operate the skylights with the smartphone app. You can download the smartphone app from Google Play or Apple, uh, depending on what kind of phone you have. And um, again, it's uh, it's really eye-opening to uh, to see how you know what's going on in your house and how skylights can play a role in again making a healthier indoor environment. I get asked this question a lot. It rains here. What happens if I have my skylights open while we're talking about technology and sensors? Can you talk a little bit about the rain sensor in these skylights? Sure. So on our solar powered skylights, uh, right next to the, the little solar panel that mounts to the low side of the skylight on the outside of it, there's a rain sensor. Now this is an acoustic rain sensor. It needs to feel the thump of a raindrop or that vibration to close a skylight, which means that it's not going to close in the morning dew. It's not going to close a skylight in a light drizzle. Uh, It's not going to uh, close a skylight if you have a really steep roof pitch and the skylight's open and it's covering where the rain sensor is. So it's, it's not like an automatic thing, but it's a safety mechanism. So if you forget to, to uh, close the skylight before you leave and, uh, and, you, and you get a good rain that's threatening to get inside the house, it's going to close the skylight automatically. It's one of those things where it's good to set the expectation uh, with the customer because we, we get a lot of calls, hey, it's raining out and my skylight's not closing, what's going on? Well, it's just a little drizzle. It's really not threatening to get inside the house. As a safety feature, it's saved me a few times. I like to sleep with the skylights open with the fresh air, but I've woken up quite a few mornings and they've been shut and I slept through the whole thing. <laughs> so it's nice to catch when I don't do that. <laughs> that brings up another point. You, you know, when I started uh, with Velux uh, many years ago, our electric components, they were pretty noisy. I mean, when you opened your skylight, you knew it. Uh, it would kind of vibrate through the house. Today, they're just whisper quiet. You can't even hear them when they go up and down. And the same with the shades. Okay, so we've talked about the different types of skylights, features, a lot of the technology. So now people want to put skylights in their home. What are some best practices on selecting where to install skylights? The best way to decide where you're going to install a skylight uh, is to 
look at that, look at your, your floor plan and think about where do you need light the most? Because that's going to be the best place for the skylight typically. Now, if you're in a two story home and the place you really need light is in your kitchen, that maybe isn't going to happen. But there's lots of places in the, you know, in a home like this, a single story home, you have opportunities in practically every room of the house to put a skylight. Another consideration is where do you, uh, where do you need ventilation? So we know that in a, uh, in a bathroom, for instance, there's a, that's a place when you're taking showers, you get a lot of humidity buildup. Uh, opening up a skylight just kind of clears out the air in there uh, really quickly. If you have the ability to put a skylight in a kitchen, that's a great place because when you open one up, um, in fact, some of, the, some of the nicest installations I've seen have been where there's like a big four by four skylight over a kitchen island. It just is so dramatic. It, it almost uh, lifts the ceiling up. But practically speaking, putting a venting skylight there releases all the, the cooking odor, the humidity in the kitchen. Uh, so that's a great place. On a two-story home, one of the best places for a skylight would be at the top of the stairwell, uh, especially a venting skylight or a fresh air skylight. Because again, when you open a window down low and you open that uh, skylight at the top of the stairwell, which is usually about the highest place in the house, you just create that chimney effect of moving all of that hot air uh, out of the house. And it happens very quickly and uh, sometimes dramatically. You can sit in a chair and actually feel the breeze go by. So uh, those are great places. Sometimes the, uh, the way your home is constructed will dictate uh, where you put a skylight. For instance, if you have a truss roof, it takes you know a little bit more effort to put a larger skylight there because truss manufacturers uh, aren't real keen on us cutting trusses, not without an engineer getting involved. So best to get a skylight for a space like that uh, that stays in between your roof rafters or your trusses. And we have you know all kinds of models and sizes that uh, that will fit in between uh, trusses or rafters. So yeah, I mean, and then just generally speaking, a skylight, a lot of times you'll want to have uh, a flared well where the, uh, the bottom of the, uh, the well going through an attic space, if that's your situation, usually drops plumb and then the top of the skylight is uh, flared out. So maybe on a, uh, on a nominal two by four skylight in your roof, the actual opening in the in the ceiling will be something like two by six feet. You're you're able to throw that light out wider. Finally, uh, I'm really an advocate for putting uh, skylights into master bathrooms uh, on uh, especially in newer homes. What tends to happen is um, production builders put homes on smaller and smaller lots. Privacy is decreased. Uh, because there's a house right next to you. And, um, you know, I walk through a lot of model homes and uh, when I walk into the master bath, what I see is I see that, that giant window over the tub and uh, I'm looking at my neighbor, you know, and I'm thinking there's going to be a shade put on here immediately when this homeowner moves in and, uh, and they're never going to get light through that window because who's going to crawl through the tub to open that shade, right? So that's a great place for a skylight. In fact, if, uh, if more builders put a skylight in the master bathroom to replace that, uh, they would stay within their budget, uh, their energy budget and financial budget and uh, get more bang for the buck with a skylight and ventilation as well. I love your tip about putting a skylight at the top of a stairwell if you have a second story home. As someone with a single story home, I've never thought about that before. We kind of chose to put ours where there's windows on the wall. We could kind of get a little bit of airflow that you've been talking about and get this space a little bit more healthy and cooled down and a lot of the cooking odors and just anything in the house out. Right. And yeah, that's a good point. You know, pay attention to where your vertical windows are. Um, really the, the beautiful thing about skylights is they will bring light into the core of a space, which is usually very dark. And, uh, sometimes that's a hallway or sometimes that could be a, uh, a bedroom and people don't think about putting skylights in bedrooms because they th think, you know, I, I don't want to be 
woken up at five in the morning in, in the summertime with his blazing light, they don't know that we have shades available. And, uh, and a lot of people use their shades as their alarm clock, actually. But yeah, those are, those are good points about, uh, about placement. Yeah, and sometimes those features, as simple as a blackout shade, are the decision makers for somebody to commit to putting a skylight in their bedroom. Exactly. So you talked about shades and sometimes homeowners trying to find one after the fact. Is there an option with Velux to get a shade added or changed? Or is that something that kind of has to be done at the time of ordering? Absolutely. We have shades available uh, for those customers that uh, that didn't think or didn't know that that they were available before. Or maybe maybe they knew about them but didn't think they would need them. And then uh, all of a sudden they're in the middle of the of the summer and uh, they're and it's getting really warm underneath that skylight. And they they start to say, man, I wish I had one of those. So um, the homeowner could go to uh, VLUXUSA.com and they would be able to go through the various shade options are, that are available. They could go back to their contractor and ask them to come out and do it or a skylight specialist. We have an installer locator on our website uh, where they could find someone to do a shade. Or Velux has a service representative uh, in this market. He lives uh, in the Seattle area and uh, you could hire him to come out and put that shade for you. So yeah, there's, there's lots of options and it happens pretty frequently. Um, and we love when customers come back to us and, and, uh, and ask for a shade and, and we kind of sympathize with them. We even have a discount available on our website, usually if they wanna purchase one. That's awesome. So jumping back to, we mentioned engineers and putting in skylights and maybe having to cut trusses. Do you typically need an engineer or an expert to help survey and plan? Uh, usually you don't. Um, that's a pretty big expense for a lot of people to hire someone. Um, the only time if you have an existing home when you might do that is if you're going to change something structural uh, in the ceiling or, in the, uh, or on the roof. And like I said, we do have skylights that will fit in between the existing rafters or trusses, and that's usually the best way to go. But if you did you know, have a particular application, you could certainly um, uh, hire an engineer to come out. And you know, if you wanted to have a large skylight that spanned one or more of those trusses in your roof, wanted a big opening down below, yeah, those would be the people to go to. But most people will will just stay within, uh, you know, we'll just buy skylights and keep them within the, uh, the spacing uh, that exists already. We chose to just kind of work with the construction of our house and we put ours in the bays between the ceiling rafters. And in one room we wanted more lights, so we actually just did two of the standard size skylights in between the ceiling rafters and it's worked out great for us and it was a lot simpler of a process. That's a great point, yeah. Um, you can add additional skylights. In fact, if you wanted to have the, uh, the look of one large skylight, you could use, again, uh, the combi flashing that I had mentioned earlier and put the skylights into adjacent bays, at least with deck mount skylights. Curb mount skylights, you would have to uh, jump a bay but yeah, multiple skylights in rooms, that's, uh, that's a great way, especially if you have a larger space that you're trying to light up. So if we take the route, someone decides they're gonna work with the structure of their existing home, they're not gonna use an engineer to kind of write the plans out. When it comes to installation, is it best to have a contractor do it or could someone take it on as a DIY project? What's kind of the best way to handle it? Well, it kind of depends on the installation. So there's a, there's a big difference between replacing a skylight and installing a new skylight. Uh, installing a new skylight generally involves all of the trades you could think of. It involves framing, it involves finish framing, it involves drywall work, uh, roofing. You know, sometimes there might be some electrical or HVAC, whatever's going on in the attic in that area, uh, insulation. So finding someone with, uh, with all those skills is sometimes kind of hard, but a remodeling contractor or a skylight specialist would be, often be a good choice in a case like that. Those typically would not be a DIY homeowner project, installing or cutting in a brand new skylight. 
With a uh, replacement skylight, uh, those are a little bit easier. And depending on the skill of the homeowner, it could be considered a project like that. In the case of the curb mount skylight, for instance, um, once the curb is flashed and the skylight is set on, it can be removed fairly easily. Imagine a curb mount skylight as being like the lid on a box of chocolates. It comes off, it goes on. Fairly simple process, right? You unscrew the existing one, you pull it off and you put on the new one. So I could see that potentially being a, uh, a homeowner project, but I would really caution them in you know, saying that being on the roof, especially a steeper roof can be highly dangerous. Skylights are very heavy. There is nothing uh, light about them. So whoever does a job like that, you know, they just want to make sure they're doing it safely. And the, the best way to do it is to have a couple of buddies with you, uh, be properly anchored to the roof, have someone on the ground who can call 911 quickly in case there's an accident. But uh, yeah, that, that would be a case more for a, for a homeowner project. But again, I wouldn't recommend it alone. And frankly, as far as I'm concerned, I, I don't like to get on the roof at all. It's just too dangerous and it's not worth it usually. Uh, the other type of uh, installation would be a tubular skylight. And those are also oftentimes uh, a DIY project. If the homeowner isn't afraid to cut a hole in their roof, because sometimes that can be the scariest part, right? You're cutting a hole in a perfectly good roof. It causes anxiety for a lot of people. So, you know, my first go-to would be uh, to hire an expert to do that. But if you have a, uh, uh, if a homeowner has those skills and they're motivated and, uh, and they can do that type of work, um, a sun tunnel can go in in a matter of about two or three hours. At least that's how fast a professional could do it. A homeowner might take them all day, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's not as challenging as a skylight cut in for sure. And do all of the products kind of come with some installation best practices or their resources through VLUX on how to do that if someone was feeling like they want to cut a hole in their roof? Yes, we do have uh, installation instructions that come with uh, all of our skylights. Uh, we also make flashing kits for all of our skylights. So if someone is wanting to retrofit an existing skylight, put in a new solar power one, what does that look like? Are there custom sizes available? Are they pretty much standard sizes? If someone needs a custom size. What does that process look like? So with regard to uh, uh, custom sizes, first of all, uh, that represents a fairly small percentage of the skylights that we run across. If it's a curb mount skylight, the standard sizes that are available have been there and in use for probably you know, like 40 or 50 years. So they just tend to get used over and over and over. Normally you're going to have a nominal two by two, two by four or four by four skylights. Those are the sizes that most people have. Uh, but there is 10% of them uh, approximately that aren't standard. And for those, uh, Velux can make skylights for them. We can do custom skylights actually up to 35 square feet. We have a product called SkyMax uh, for a large span skylight so that if you needed to, uh, if you were pulling off, say, a, uh, a very large uh, structural skylight that had mullions and divided panes and things like that, uh, we can actually replace that with one large single skylight. So it could be like three feet high by 10 feet long. They're very heavy and they often require, you know, uh, maybe a crane or at least uh, half a dozen guys to get it on the roof, but those kind of skylights are available. And then on smaller sizes, our, uh, our fixed curb mount models are available uh, to replace those. So we've talked a lot about the benefits of skylight with energy savings and healthy living. Are there any kind of tax credits that would be helpful for homeowners to know about? Yes, there are. Federal tax credits are available for skylights uh, with built-in solar technology. And what this did was, in terms of skylights, was it allowed a solar skylight to receive a 30% federal tax credit on the entire installation of it. And of course, it depends on the, on the individual homeowner situation, but um, these products are eligible for that tax credit. They're not guaranteed in every single case. So, you know, an owner should definitely check with their uh, tax professional. 
but uh, generally they are available and they work and uh, and they're wonderful. That's amazing. Uh, so these tax credits, does it differ for the solar, the tubular skylights, for the fixed ones? What does the difference look like for those? So the, the solar uh, tax credits, the 30% federal tax credit, that are that, that's available for a solar powered skylight and a solar powered shade. Those are actually also available on a fixed skylight. So you can get a tax credit on a skylight that doesn't even open. And the way you can do that is by adding a solar powered shade on it. Uh, there's also uh, federal tax credits available on tubular skylights. Velux has a solar powered nightlight that you can hang up inside of the tubing just above the ceiling diffuser. It, it's it got uh, a couple of uh, batteries that charge all day. And when uh, lights go out at night, the little night light comes on and it shines through the through the diffuser and it, uh, and it lights up the spot so that when you get up in the middle of the night to, uh, to walk around the house or to uh, go into your bathroom or whatever, you know, you don't have to turn on lights. And uh, so that makes that entire product eligible for those same federal tax credit. And that, uh, that nightlight is, uh, is very affordable. It's a very small piece of the overall cost of the thing. So we've covered a lot of topics about skylights. Are there any common questions or topics or anything else that we should share? Well, I think one thing um, that it would be important for a, for a homeowner to know is that when it comes to solar powered shades, uh, for instance, Velux offers them in many uh, styles and colors. And so if you wanted a, uh, a green shade to match your sofa or something or an orange shade or something like that, we've got it. But those would be considered special order shades that aren't pre-installed. And while the shade might be eligible for the federal tax credit, the entire installation might not be. So if, uh, if color, you know, if you don't need a whole palette of colors to choose from, try to stay with a pre-installed uh, uh, style of shade. But if you need a, a special color, we have those available. They're just not pre-installed. And you'll want to talk about that with your contractor. From talking to Rob Dunn, it sounds like Dunn Lumber has been selling Velux products for decades. I really appreciate you coming out here and talking with us today and sharing all of your knowledge about these products. You guys have been such a great vendor partner for us and you personally have answered so many, many questions from us. And thank you again for being here. Well, thank you very much. Um, and I'll just say one last thing. If you're in the trades or a homeowner or anyone and you need some help uh, with Velux Skylights, uh, just feel free to contact on Lumber. They'll put you in contact with me and uh, and I'll, I'll give you whatever help I can. I make house calls. Uh, we have a service rep if needed. I do contractor seminars. I do architect seminars. Uh, I do dealer seminars. So yeah, if product knowledge uh, is what you need, then uh, feel free to give me a call. But I'm really happy to be a, you know, the, the skylight resource in the Puget Sound area for our customer base. So thank you.